Hey everybody, we're starting the show this week without the four lines that I normally read because I was so distracted. Uh, we're just going to do the blah blah blah, blah 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 blah, blah 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 blah, the Mythwits! The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture. Every week we invite industry folks to come on and play games and to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is Mike Kafis. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Jack Ballard. Hi, I have terrible technical difficulties. I <laughs> hope this is my time to say hi. Water's okay. wet. <laughs> right. Laura Nicole Spencer. Hello. And Jay Libby. Yo, suckers. <laughs> guest, I think you were guest umer, numero uno, weren't you? Were, you? were you the first one? Yeah, because we did it, what, over two nights? Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah, he was patient zero, as we like to call patient, him. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, uh, Laura Nicole is an audio maven whose skills range from voice acting to audio engineering. Her company, Resonant Moon Audiobook Solutions, helps authors, narrators, and podcasters make their audio productions cleaner, more concise, and accurate. Her YouTube show, Cold Reads, gathers new and experienced voice actors together to do a cold read of a short story with the author present. Jay Libby is an artist, a designer, and a writer. He is the co-owner of Dilly Green Bean Games and works for R. Talsorian Games. And Elder, I think you still do. Do you still work for R. Talsorian? Yeah, I think I do. You think you do? Okay. <laughs> they, took to, they took me to Gen Con and I, I pimped the shit out. So I, all right, I, all right. Uh, and Elder Gods Publishing, as well as being a contributor, contributing writer for TSR's Multiverse. Jay is known for his superhero game G Core, Cyberpunk V3 product line, Doctor Who Adventures in Time and Space, and countless fusion products. Hold on, wait, hold that up again, Jay. I wasn't on you at the second. That was That's the second. Okay. There you go. Nice. Very good. Very good. Um, so, welcome. Welcome, our guests. Now, I didn't uh, know we're doing product plugs in the video. You, I'll show absolutely. my book. Absolutely. Yeah, do it. Do it. Oh, yeah. our, our, this is our audio listeners can't hear this, so watch the video, folks. Plug oh, wait, like, If we're doing more... But, well, well, what is, is she holding up? What is she holding I, up? I am holding up my very first book, Stonebriar Case Files Bad Alchemy, um, which was also the first uh set of stories that we did on cold reads um and i'm very proud of it because it's my baby well okay. everyone should read your baby what? okay <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I don't know what that means but we'll go with it isn't that a book did you what, just read your baby book? yes it, yes i did hold it. well everyone just, should read your did you just call everyone, your baby everyone should read your baby just sounds weird mike yeah that's uh, have that's we met thing. Have we met? <laughs> oh, we have oh, several times, in fact. <laughs> All right. Um, so, look, hey, the topic tonight. So, I'm doing, uh, we're, we're going to do um, a quick topic tonight before we end, do our interviews. Um, the, uh, the, oh, there goes Jack. Uh, <laughs> Jack is having technical difficulties, everyone. Um, so, uh, the, the topic tonight is what do you enjoy most out of gaming? Like, and this is role playing. So, RPGs, tabletop, rolling dice with pencil and paper and that whole thing. And I'll go first to give you all a little time, being that I already knew the question. Um, now, my favorite thing, I'm a gaming gearhead, so I love mechanics. And I know a lot of people, especially today nowadays, they, uh, they're really big on talking about setting. And, you know, and for some people, mechanics don't mean anything. All they care about is setting. Uh, for others, they like their mechanics nice and light and barely there. Like, like I want to sit down and I want to make a character right now and I want to play in 15 minutes and I don't want to even have to think about it. Me... I love mechanics. I'm, I, you know, I, I get totally into it. Um, so th that is my favorite thing. Uh, who wants to go next? I guess I can Let's go. Do... All right, Laura. Sure. Now you were saying um, you're a little new, little newer to gaming. I think you were saying before. Uh, that would be incorrect. You. you okay, I'm sorry. I read. Point. I read that. I thought I read that. I um. I actually recently just started. Uh, running games as a game master, but I've been That's, playing games. Okay. I've been playing games for a while. Um, but what I really like about games, other than the sound of dice rolling, which is just a magical sound <laughs> altogether, it is. Um, is 
is the interactions that you have um, with people that you may not know. Um, people will see me tagged as, um, as Weasel on Facebook a lot. And that's because I have made some really great friends who only know me as my character's name, Weasel. Um, and, uh, and so I really like those interactions. And as far as running the game, I like it when the players really give me a run for my money. And then we just let the dice decide what the hell's going to happen. Right. Okay. Very cool. And Jay. Yeah. You're a game designer. Tell what do you, what do you what do you enjoy most about gaming? I think I don't know. It's it's hard because like when I go to write like when I go to run games, I end up writing adventures like I'm publishing publishing them. Not like I don't know. I, somewhere I got blurred in there between designer and in actually running games. But I think this year at Gen Con was like I did an off the cuff game with a bunch of players, and it was all ages. And I, I think I really thrive in running games for all age groups. And it just makes it more fun and more challenging. And I don't know, just seeing people enjoy themselves is probably the the one thing I like about it. Okay. All right. And and uh, Mike, you can go next. I I think you're gonna agree with me, Pete. Uh, that for me, I really like the actual character building and the you know oh, yeah. getting into the character because if if I have successfully climb that mountain it's just all downhill fun from there <laughs> i mean i think that we can all agree that i've i've really made some interesting characters through the years and you have so, so i think the that's thing, my favorite part i can tell you what you don't like you don't like when you roll a number and then that number means right. something completely and, different and there's a chart and calculus and right. minus five <laughs> equals two on tuesdays <laughs> except for the coupon that's what I don't like. Hashtag uh, Star Lord. No, Time or Lords. Star Time Lords. Time Literally. Lords. Time Lords. Yeah. <laughs> this game, it's called Time Lords. It's one of the. It's a really old school, like crunchy, heavy mechanics game. And like when you roll damage, you look on a chart. And the chart tells you what the damage really is. So you can be like, oh, I rolled 15 on my damage. And the game has to go, uh, yep, you did six points. And you're like, uh, what? And it was never any direct calculation. Like, it was yeah. never like, well, you divide that by two or anything like that. It was just, you'd look on a chart and go, oh, that was uh, 25 this time. And you're like, what? <laughs> oh, I rolled a 20. Ah, uh, sorry, you got hit. But I was attacking. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah. you got hit. <laughs> All right, Jack. What what do you enjoy most about what do you, what do you enjoy most about gaming? Uh, what I hate the most is computers. I just okay. want to get that out right away because I really hate computers. Before you uh, really, help out again, really hate them. Um, right. uh, what I like most about gaming is the camaraderie and uh, sitting around the table, getting inebriated with other people, and having a good time. And sometimes taking it seriously, and sometimes taking it not so seriously. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's what I like. I like the, in the human interaction because really I can play games on any kind of device. Really. Uh, it's that, it's that human element that I, I really enjoy. Right. Okay. So that's what differentiates us. In other words, you're saying that like you could play any kind of game at all, but, but it doesn't matter as long as you got the people there to play with. That's yeah, the best part. That's what of it's it. all yeah. about. It's the people, yeah, sure. man. I can yeah. see that. And and I really think that that's why role playing games and tabletop games are kind of pushing ahead of video games. I think video games are starting to take a back seat to all that stuff now. Um, at least that's what the numbers look like. Well, yeah, because um, you've uh, you've only got a certain number of choices. It is a pick your own adventure uh, experience. But with um, with tabletop gaming, your imagination is the only limitation. Um, if you've got a, uh, a DM that uh, really will work with you um, or if your game set allows it, because it depends on like there are some games that are really open ended and some games that are really um, very much a choose your own adventure and they have set things, which can be really good um, mm -hmm. and fun to play. I think my favorite one in that vein is like um, Murder at House on the Hill. Or Betrayal okay. at House on the Hill. Um, and it's got like 50 different scenarios based on what item you pulled and what room it was in. So. Okay, cool. 
I, I tell you, one of the, like Mike, you touched on this, and I, I really like this. This have to. This I think this really ties into sort of ties into the mechanics a little bit, but this is sort of a little more on the. Uh, the the role R O L E portion of the playing. Um, I took an excerpt. Steve Wallet posted this just yesterday, and this is why. That's what made me think of this question. I knew we were all role players, and and this is what kind of uh, made me uh, think about this as a question or as a topic. And I, we our favorite campaign ever was this one we did called Star Trek Late Night, and we were all playing um, villains. Uh, this time in Star Trek, so we didn't we didn't want to play people who were like uh, you know who were part of the military on a star vessel. Uh, we were playing people from a penal colony, and we'd all escaped this penal colony, and that was that was how the adventure was going and what it was all about. So we kind of played on the outskirts of of space, and uh, had this character Alir, and this is from his background. Now we got we this is the the one campaign where we went all in. We we all typed up long backgrounds on our characters. My my character background was ten thousand words. It was like a it was like a it was like a tiny little novelette. <laughs> And uh, well, well, this is this is how it happened. You got you got to pick backgrounds for your characters, and you got these background packages. So you got a number of points in a certain set of skills for picking a background, and then for each background to get the points for it, you had to write a, a little like blurb on it. And I went nuts, you know, because I like to write, so I just went crazy with it. So here's here's one of the excerpts from one of his backgrounds. Uh, he was transitioning from one career to another. All right, so uh, uh, giving up. A life of danger, Alir Torin begins a fruitful career as the porn star Maximus. He stars in over 40 movies and ends the year in the blockbuster Wormholes with superstar Galaxina. He earns the Golden Cock Award for Best Human-Human Male-Female Sex Scene. They move in together and the tabloids are ablaze with rumors. So... <laughs> So wow. I was playing. wondering what the hell that what was. What the hell is in your brain? I mean, what? that's brilliant, but... <laughs> well, I wanted... I, I was trying to play one of the things I was trying to do, you know, because you're we were making up we're trying to make up characters who are not like, you know, like normal like Star Trek characters. And I was trying to make up a character that would have some charisma and have skills in like, you know, being um charismatic and charming and stuff like that. Um so he transitioned at one point he went from being a pit fighter to a to a porn star and then he started a career as a uh, a male escort for a while. Uh, so that's where he, he learned he learned his interpersonal and like you know charm skills and stuff like that. So it was just it was it was a neat character. We did, I mean I didn't do anything with that aspect of him once the game started. That was in his past. It was just it was just a piece of his past. It was I don't know. It was just a fun character. So real real quick, what uh, Laura? I bet you've played some pretty interesting characters. What what would you? What is your favorite? In, in like just a real quick blurb, your favorite character. So my favorite character is the one I'm currently playing, and her name is um, Weasel. Um, and I just happen to have my character sheet up, so I will read a blurb from hers. Um, her best friend is someone named uh, Pi, who is a, a male human uh, uh, monk, and she is a healer, and they both share the same deity. Um, as the temple fell into disrepair, she was granted a dream of how to help Pi restore the temple. And thus the side hustle began. He robs the nobles in shadowy areas of the city, and should they be injured, they come to Weasel for discreet healing. She takes the payment in the form of information, but the nobles don't even know that they are paying her. Oh, okay. So another yet questionable character. Oh, um, yeah. She's she's a true neutral, and um, basically, if people can't help themselves, then she does. Oh, okay, fantastic. And I, I, yeah, Pete. Before yes. we before we move on, I feel like because we have a um, uh, former Iron GM champion in our chat room, I feel like I wanted to ask David, uh, give him a chance to chime in on the question as well. So uh, I did, and he said setting and characters as well as storytelling for him, which I think is apropos, being that he is a you know, grand champion and all. Grand champion, oh. yes. Oh, oh you're GM. Hey. Right. All right, Jay, come on. There's company in the chat, so I won't talk too much shit about him. Right. <laughs> and Jay, I know you, so, you've been gaming so mean forever. To David, man. Yeah, I have been gaming forever. It's kind of scary. I don't know. I I think my, uh, my favorite character actually would have been a 
a duo pair because back in the, the old days, we, when we used to game, it was like myself and Jason Rickanian who run D&D. I had this character called Bastrick the Fighter, and his sidekick was Nero the Elf. And the elf liked to pick pockets. And we got stuck in Hollow World, and he was trying to pick pockets of Aztecians, which are the – they all wear breech cloths. And I always botched my pickpocket rolls so you could grab lots of balls during Gosh. the game. And so we uh, – we ended up we ended up having to take out the pirate king because Bastric the, the fighter was obsessed with this goddess. And he's like, if I can be king of the pirates, she'll fall in love with me, not knowing that her boyfriend was some bear badass. And so we really fucked up Hollow World for a while just because we were wanted by the Aztecians, so we had to fuck them up because they kept following us everywhere to hunt us down. And then the pirates were like, Hey, yeah, you killed our king, so uh you're in charge. And we're like, shit, what are you gonna do if you're stuck in a world when you got ships with big cannons? Go hunt the Indians. So so what we did. This is our pickpocket. Do not shake his hand. Ever. Right. Yeah, that was, he's, he's got dirty dick hands. Oh, geez. That was I think that was probably back in like the, the early nineties, late eighties. Right. And since then I've just been running games. I don't get to really play very much anymore. So Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, if I run a one shot, you're more than welcome to be one of my players. Nice. Thank you, Laura. All right. Hey, Jack, can you hear us? Yeah, kind of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to get down to your, I'm have to get down to your place and fix your computer, man. What is, uh, what is your favorite character? I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. yes, yes. I agree. <laughs> wow. That awesome. Huge delay. Really? Oh, crap. You can't hear. No way. You can't hear me at all. Sweet. Yeah, a little bit, but it's like real like you remember Max Headroom? Yeah. You're kinda like Max Headroom. Like it's oh, just hey, kinda like all right, let's troubleshoot this real quick, Jack. I think I can do it. If you go to the top, there's a bar with like it says adjust bandwidth settings, bandwidth usage. Uh, Turn that down a little bit. Take it down like two notches. Up on your hangouts. Right up in the middle. It should be like right I got you. I got you. Turn that down a little bit. That might help. So has anybody played the game Urban Shadows? Okay. Yes, I, I have not we played, played it on Game School. So okay. that was my very first game that I ran as as a GM, and uh, and it went so well that I left people crying, and then they said, "Hey, can you run another game?" Oh, said, well, that's sure. that's what I look forward in a game. <laughs> so All right, maybe, hey Jack, how about run, now? Like, a it's a little better. Did that help some? What's your favorite character that you've played? I know you haven't played a whole lot, but what, like, if you had to pick one? Oh, no, I had a bard um, that was a uh, dwarf that uh, was name was Lemmy, and uh, he had, uh, he was awesome. <laughs> he was, like, my favorite character. He's so right. good, he makes cameos in other people's games. Other people oh, have cool. uh, him uh, be a bartender and stuff, because he was great. And, and I played with my girlfriend, who also <laughs> So played, of, um, shit, I can't think of what what it was, but I used to smack her butt, pretty, and and you know I was a very aggressive dwarf towards her character, and it was kind of fun in a non rapey kind of way, but um, but yeah, that was my that was my best character was Lemmy by far. Oh, cool, fantastic. All right, so so let's let's do this, Laura. You are a um. You are a voice talent person, uh, and you have something called Resonant Moon. Would you care to tell yeah. us about this? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so Resonant Moon Audiobook Solutions is um, uh, my company that I started in April. And uh, basically, I do audio engineering. I do QC work. Um, I do cleanups. I do occasional narrations. Uh, basically anything to make your podcast or audiobook sound better. Um, and I even have degrees, so it's kind of nice that I'm actually using those degrees. And I've done work for every for a lot of people, including um, one of the early podcast novelists, uh, Seth Harwood. I've done work for Game School. Um, I've done a lot of work for... Uh, various things, including because it's released now, so I can say it. I did work on uh, the latest Stephen King book, um, Sleeping Beauties. Hmm. Yeah. Very nice. So, 
I, I saw it come in my inbox and I said, yes, this is mine. This is mine. Nobody else can touch Golf it. Golf clap. Excellent. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so That's excited. Cool. Um, so yeah, and I really enjoy doing it. And of course, now that I have a nine to five, um, I come home and it's kind of my escape from whatever I've been doing for the day. So I really like, I like doing that. And then occasionally I do voices on the side. Okay, very cool. And then you have you have something called cold reads. Yes. So speaking of doing voices, um, cold <laughs> reads is a is a brainchild that I came up with on Facebook with a bunch of my audio friends, where uh, I get together new and experienced voice actors to read a short story or a chapter of a story. Um, basically, I am giving people the experience of a cold read. They don't get the script until about fifteen minutes before the show. Um, and I assign parts and then we go mistakes and all, and we do a little round table afterwards about what could be better. Um, what tips and tricks help you to read a better cold read. Um, and you get some insights. Um, this actually kind of was inspired by, uh, what we did for your story, Pete. Oh, cool. Uh, back at Balticon. I was just yes. going to ask. I was just yes. going to say that. <laughs> yes, because um, Pete had a story that we did at Balticon. And um, because of the people that were there, we made some innuendos happen. And it went in a completely different direction. And <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. I, I think all of us peed a little because we were laughing so hard. Um, yeah. And... Uh, and so I was like, you know what, that would be cool. And if I can get the authors to be on the show at the same time, um, that would be even better uh, because we would be able to uh, workshop their story. Because sometimes they write the story specifically for the show. Um, so we can do that too. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, point of order. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I want in on this. I've already invited you. <laughs> she, she invited us, brother. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do a Mythwits episode. No, 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 no. I, me personally, just oh, okay. separate. Yeah. I want in. All right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Fantastic. either way, but I'm interested in. I uh, just, you know, because it sounds are, like are you know, you it's okay if you're. Uh, Friday, like after Thanksgiving, Friday. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Well, what time? Uh, seven thirty Eastern time. We'll talk. We'll All right, talk. we'll talk. But that is when the next show is, and it runs every other. It usually runs every other Thursday. I'm just skipping to Friday because of the holiday. Right. Yeah. Right. I like Thursdays, but okay. <laughs> All right. So, so then we also have. All right. Well, thank you, Laura. Thank you. We'll give some links out in thank just you, a Laura. moment. Jay, Mister Mister Libby. Um, now, Jay. The, the fans of, of Mythwits know you, but but for anyone who's watching who's never seen this mug, this I'm, um, it's it's right on his <laughs> face right now. This mug here, this Moxie oh. mug. What, <laughs> what what do you? What is it that you do there, Mister Libby? He, he makes the internet great. Right <laughs> Gonna make it great, the internet. <laughs> well, first I do pl product placement, so Moxie and uh, Jeff yeah. Talanian's Astonishing Swordsman Hyperborea. So you haven't bought nice. it, go buy your damn fucking buck. It's nice, um, hey, Jeff. It is good. It's huge, too. You can use it to knock Mike out when he's been drinking. So mm. can't wait for TotalCon this year. <clears throat> right. So I write games. I write Created G Core, um, which is like my, my baby. Um, Wrote for Doctor Who, their Aliens and Creatures box set back way back when I first got away from Arc Hellstorian for a little bit while they're on their hiatus. Um, now they're back, so kind of been playing around with their Mech 10 Zero stuff on on demand and things. Other than that, I mean, I finished up my 600 page G Core setting book last at the beginning of the summer, and then now I'm working on the next big book. However, we do have a new product that we're test testing. It's the um, Game designers crate, Christmas crate, because it's very important. Um, it comes with its own crucifix. Mm -hmm. It comes with, let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, it has two nails. The only problem <laughs> we're having is we can't decide if we want this hammer <laughs> or this hammer. 
this is such a task of telling you. Is this so, hey Jay, is this for the game designer who just feels the need to uh, crucify themselves? Is that is that what that's for? It, it is. If you feel left out from all the all the heat and fire going on in the industry, you have to have this great crate. And um, I I think we found a publisher for it. It's called Black Cock Productions. So. <laughs> Oh, wow, wow, they're huge. I am totally stoked. <laughs> that's, that's oh, wow. Really, really big in the industry. <laughs> look, look. See, it's just a freaking rooster. Get your heads out of the, the sand. <laughs> I teach, so you all got to keep it semi-clean. Uh, we're not the one talking about black cocks. Hey, it's, it's a rooster. Hey, hey, hey. It's, a, it, it's the British Broadcasting Company. Right, right, there you go, right? <laughs> Fantastic, so, uh, Doctor Who would love it. Yeah, so I've been I've been doing that. I've been running a game day. Actually, David Benavides had come up once for the game day. The dude drove like three hours to come game, so it was oh, pretty nice. cool. I have a little hiatus right now because I'm kind of distracted by other lovely life things. So, um, But I'm also yeah. doing freelance art for Fireside Productions, which James Ward does writing for them. They're doing the, what, 77 Worlds? Right. So um, Stephen Lee, he, I had thrown something at him one day, and we're kind of just talking art and stuff. And then the next thing I know, I've got contracts, and he keeps sending me contracts. So, I mean, it's, it's James Warden, and Stephen's a great guy to work for. So, And then, of course, I work for Doug Poirier doing doing freelance Thunder stuff. And I even got to do some TSR stuff off the cuff right before I left for Gen Con, which was completely badass. Can't wait to see that right. in print. Um, and, uh, and you're going to be part of the TSR room this year at Total Con, right? Yes, I am, and thank you, TSR, for having me once again, and to get some badass games prepped. In fact, I was setting some stuff up while I was waiting for the show to start. So, fantastic, pretty groovy. Hey, Laura, are you going to Total Con this year? I'm gonna try. Um, okay. I mean, it's it's pretty close by. I could day trip it if I really wanted to, uh, but I had a lot of fun a couple of years ago when I saw you guys there, and um, and I was introduced to Pathfinder while I was there. And then I went and did a whole campaign with some of my friends. So um, I definitely want to give that a shot again. And there were some really fun games that people were debuting there, um, which was a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. If if you do make it out, if you do make it out, I I'm gonna. One of the things I'm gonna throw out there is uh, we have uh, we're running a big game Friday night in the uh, in the TSR room, and it's uh, it's called the Hunt. And it is going to be a maze balls. It's uh, it's it's a so you remember the Running Man, right? So you have a mm-hmm. character that you play, and you're, it's like you're in the Running Man, except you're um, there's different factions that you can play. But like one of the things you can play is you can play like one of the guys that are or girls, whatever, one of the people who are like the the specials, you know, like like the Sub Zero guy or or the the one with the chainsaw or whatever, and they fight each other, and then there's prisoners that they, you can fight and stuff, and it's gonna be a big like 15 person event with a big giant set up with a 3d like a you know put together board uh and it's gonna be we're gonna have um oh god damn what's his name uh uh, uh chris chris um chris, chris no. Uh, no chris uh, pierce chris pierce chris pierce, chris pierce. Chris pierce is yeah. gonna be i'm gonna give him a bullhorn and he's gonna go around like an announcer you know uh you that's know he's gonna be, to start um, running running <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's going to be all about trash talking. The first about half an hour of this game is going to be nobody playing on the board or anything. It's going to be you are all at this pre-fight party, and you're going to be LARPing your character at the party and talking shit with everyone else. Like, when I see you in the ring, I'm going to take you down. So it's going to be really cool, and then we're going to go to the ring, and we're going to play it out. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be crazy. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, I, and I if think you, I have to... I I have to make a priority of going now. Oh, it, 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 <laughs> it's so going to be insane. Go <laughs> right. And it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be our own room. So it's only us in this room. So it, it is going to be fantastic. Okay. All I'm, right. I'm let sold. me, let me give out some links here. Uh, Laura, you can find Laura at Resonant Moon, R E S O N A N T M O O N.com. Uh, she has a YouTube channel, which will be in the links. I'm not reading that. 
I don't blame strong, you. Yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> you can also <laughs> find her at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cold reads. And uh, I to, should also note that yes? Resonant Moon now has a page as well that I just created yesterday. Um, okay. So facebook.com forward slash Resonant Moon. And do you have a, a Twitter that people could follow? At L Nicole Audio. Cole Audio. And I talk about. I talk about GMing, I talk about Dungeons and Dragons, I talk about shows, and I talk about me. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, because Mike, Mike likes to do the, the Twitter thing, and he'll be linking yeah. and tweeting and, and hashtagging. I tweeted, I tweeted right before the show. Did you catch us? We re, retweet us. I did retweet it. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. All right. And, and Jay, Mr. Libby, uh, you can find him at dillygreenbeangames.com. And hey, Jay, tell everybody what a dilly green bean is, because it's a real thing. Oh, yeah, it's a pickled green bean. So It's like a main thing, thing is, right? My, yeah, my, well, my business partner's wife, um, Jason's wife, Holly, she made dilly green bean games, or dilly green bean came and do it right tonight, um, <laughs> at the, it brought it to their wedding. And okay. she makes a badass dilly green bean. I like the jar she gave me. I almost felt bad I couldn't bring it back to Maine, so we wiped out most of it in Colorado before we came back. So, but it's I it's could. a pickle. That's so what they're talking about. I would try I brought try them. them. I, you've had them, you dork munch. I don't think yeah. so. I, I don't and think you're too, too, too fucking drunk. But I brought them to a couple conventions you were at. Yeah, man, well, you bring more. Had him. I'll bring I'll bring hey. some down. And right. and where else can we find you, Jay? Is do you do, do Twitter thing or do you like do you want do you even want people to find you on Facebook? <laughs> I'm, I'm ghosted on Facebook. Good luck on that one. Uh, I you know. can actually you can find my art page at House of Jay. Um, you'll and know it because there's like a, yeah, and that's the there's like a yellow baby thing with an eye or whatever. Um, that's where I post a lot of my art and stuff. Um, other than that, you find me on Twitter. I'm happy for you. Find me on Facebook. I'm not going to accept your friend's request. So. Right. Yeah, Jay. Jay is. I don't. I don't know anyone who has blocked more people than Jay. He's got like this. <laughs> he loves so the, to fight with oh, people. On Facebook. Almost four thousand people. Trust almost. me, it's 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 more of a of a burden to be a friend with Jay on Facebook. So sometimes it can be. It can. Why are you? Be, I don't. Even, I don't even post mean shit anymore. You guys are just. <laughs> <thought>. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh all right all right enough of that <laughs> nonsense all right let's do thank you all for joining us but stick around we're about to play our game for this evening and i'm going to switch over to that right now uh it's game time with the mythwits i'm your game master peter bryant and on this episode we're playing sound bite madness goddamn jack i hope you can hear this one uh the game where i play a sound bite it can be dialogue or a sound effect i will tell you tonight it's all it's all dialogue uh you will need to guess what movie it's from if there are sequels or remakes you will need to name the right one i keep it easy don't worry about it uh, you pick any sound bite on the board. There will be 12 of them. Uh, they are worth one, two, or three points. Uh, getting it right gives you points. Getting it wrong costs you points. Everyone starts with 10 points, and the person with the highest score wins. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to share the board with you all. So how that. are we choosing the quotes? You'll see. You, I was going to say, I have my D12 out. <laughs> no. So what, what we're going to do is I'm going to go down the line, and I'm going to go Mike, Jack, Laura, and Jay. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pick. You're going to tell me 1A or 2B or 2C, whatever you want. The 1, 2, and 3 are how many points they're worth. The more points they're worth, the harder they are. Like I said, you've got 10 points right now. If you get it right, you get that number of points. If you get it wrong, we take those points away from you. And uh, we're all on question one right now, or no? We can you're pick, on uh, any. You could pick three D. It doesn't matter. Yep, you pick what you want when you want to pick it. All right, and I will. I, I'm going to do this because Jay, Jack, and Mike and I are older than Laura by maybe a few years. We are. I'm going to give Laura. I'm going to give Laura one tiny hint. Laura, three <laughs> A might be tough. And 3C might be really tough. Other than that, I'm not giving any other hints. So you might okay. maybe... Hey, I'm not saying you're not going to get it. 
I'm just saying it might be a little bit of might be a little bit harder for you just because of you know Jack. You know how we do that thing where we put like old stuff in and <laughs> oh, we do that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that I'm just saying, just saying. Yeah. Anyway, just for full disclosure, I didn't pay attention to any of the numbers that you just said because I don't give a shit. Good. All right, fantastic. Wow. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> good call, good call. All right, so uh, Mike, you ready on the scoreboard? Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir, uh, sir. All right. Well, well, you are first, Mike. Give me a number and a letter. I'm gonna go three uh, B. Three B coming out the gate with a three pointer. And, oh yeah, three pointer. That's right. Let me. You ready? This All right. I gotta hit a three on mine. All right. You ready? Here yes. we go. Oh, I take him back uh, right after you suck on these little Chinese nuts. Crap, I got to pick a movie that that's from? Yep. <laughs> can I hear it one more time? Yes, sir, you absolutely can. Oh, I take him back uh, right after you suck on these little Chinese nuts. Wow. Uh, I'm going to make a guess at a sheer nothingness because I can't remember. I don't know. Oh, and everyone in the chat, I don't even have it up right now, but no one can give the answers. Um, uh, I'm going to say The Hangover. Mike? Yes. Three points, buddy. Holy Three fucking points. shit. <laughs> yeah, wow. good job. Good job. All right, Jack, you're next. All right, let me do uh, 3C. 3C. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> fucking nonsense. You want to hear I it again? I have no clue. Well, that's an easy one. Really? Uh, no one else can guess. Hold on, right? No, Jack? Uh, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. <laughs> Hey, Jay, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and say it. You can't get the points for it, but I'll let you say it. Uh, it's Jaws. It's been on TV like the last four nights. Yes, sir. My man. Burn it. Not wrecked by that. All right. Uh, Laura, you're up. Uh, everything's better in 3D. 3D. <laughs> and the answer to your question is yes. You fight for me, you get to kill the English. Oh, dude, Excellent. So easy. Come on, yeah, Jesus. Excellent. Oh, fuck Christ's sake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, William Wallace is my favorite. That would be a brave heart. Nice. All right. Yes, that is correct. Well, you never know what people are going to know what they're not going to know. I know. Trust me, I any, know. Dude, you play anything from Jaws and I'll know it. <laughs> anything. Oh, I wouldn't have got right, Jay. that one. Jay, you're up. Well, I'm going to join Jack on the three area and screw this one up with 3A. All right, 3A. Oh, my God, this girl's really turning me on. Well, <laughs> fuck, I know that one. I just I just watched this. Do you play it again? Oh, my God, this girl's really turning me on. Is it American Werewolf in London? Is that your answer? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to throw that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, why not? No, that would be Flash Gordon. Oh, fuck, that's right. All right. <laughs> you, you're not alone, Jack. I tell you, man. I know. It's super weird and obscure. I know. Hey, Pete. Well, that's why I'm fun? the I never win these games. Hey, Pete. Isn't it win. fun picking all the movies that you love and no one else know. fucking knows? It's so fun. Right. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make a game full of nothing but Chewbacca farts, and you have to guess what movie it is. <laughs> well, Mike, it's also, like you said, it's hard to find clips. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know what I got to do is I got to spend some time making my own. I have a DVD player, and I got I got the uh, I got the, the, the meter, the voice meter. I can do I can capture sounds. So I'm going to have to do – I'll do some modern ones. I'll do nothing but modern ones next time. Uh, when I have a little more time. All right. I just want to check this format out. All right. Uh, we're back to Mike. All right, I am going to go with uh, two, 2D. 2D. But I wanted that one. Uh, uh, you want to buy for three points? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> 2D. Sure, it's big enough. 
but look at the location. <laughs> oh, that would be Shrek. Shrek. Shrek it is. All right, day. Where are we? We are Jack. Yeah, I should start watching movies. It probably help. Um, Might. Get on that. I watch like two movies a year. I'll take. Uh, let me do the first easiest one. One A, please. Kindergarten level. One A. Spoon feed it to me. You close. Give them to me now. Oh yeah! Finally, the Terminator. <laughs> Hey, yes. Daddy. Yes. Wow. Very good. Yay. Has the Terminator shown up in every single game that you guys have run? What's that? No, not everyone. What's that? I, I asked Je- if the Terminator had shown up in every game you had run. Not everyone, but a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Laura, you're up. Uh, I'm going to say 2B or not 2B. All right, ready? Well, that's the question. This is crazy. You want me to hit you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what, like in the face? The <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> the first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club. And you and just broke it, it. There it is. All <laughs> right, then. I might be a movie file. <laughs> Jay, you're up. Are you going to be good at this game then? Uh, two A. Two A. Touch me, and that hand will never touch anything again. Mm, fuck, what was that? Oh. Mike hears that a lot. Not well, anymore. Jack, anyway. Um, music, man. <laughs> no, it's Jay. It's Jay, Mike. Don't guess. No, no, no. no. I'm not guessing. I was just going to ask okay. if you could play one more time. Yeah, play one I more can. time. Please. Yep, sure. Touch me, and that hand will never touch anything again. Yeah, fuck it. I don't know, dude. I bet Lauren. What do you, what do you think it is, Lar? You look like you knew. Oh, we can't hear you, Lar. Are you muted? What happened? Did you turn your mic off? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. What, do you know um, what it is? I feel like it's Alien. Uh nope. It is The Matrix. Oh, oh, I should have known that one too. I didn't Google it quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, you're up. All right. Uh, well, uh, to maybe try and ensure a win, let's go for two C. Okay. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> Batman. The uh, Batman the first. That uh, Batman. Uh, hold on. What you know? Uh, am I at the specifically put it the yes uh, i need no there's like five thousand fucking batmans i need the title of the movie this is the one one. this is the one with the uh with with the the joker and uh it's the second in the series so that would be i'll take that you know what it is dark knight Knight. Knight. yeah okay very good dark knight it is you don't. You don't have to. You don't have to. You know, go go easy on me. Yeah. No, I'm not going easy. You named it. You said the second one in the series with the Joker. That's that's the Dark Knight. All right. Uh, I can't. No, no, I don't know where to look. All right, uh, Jack, you're up. <laughs> uh, I just want to go on record as saying that five thousand fucking Batman's would be a great name for a fucking metal band. <laughs> oh, it would be five thousand fucking Batman's. That fucking would, Bat- I would go ask- see them on the yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Their logo would be like two Batmans bent over, like fucking right. Batman. It'd be great. <laughs> like, two thousand five hundred bent over Batmans. Like okay, one, be the best. One what? One B what? as in Batman. One B. One B as in Batman. Go and boil your bottom, <laughs> sons of a silly person. Ah, blow my nose at you, so called. Arthur King, you and all your silly English niggas. <laughs> I, I something tells me Laura Nicole knows it, but <laughs> she should. Wrong. That's that's Monty Python, right? Yeah, it's Monty Python, but which one? Five uh, thousand Monty Pythons. <laughs> I know five, 5 thousand fucking Monty Pythons. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Grail! It is. Holy Grail! Holy that Grail! Is. 
Correct. Correct. Yay. Correct. Yeah. Your Ooh, mother was a hamster and your father spelled of <laughs> elderberry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Laura, you're up. C or D? C. C it is. I want a passing grade. So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. Oh, I'll play it again. So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. I know it. I know it. I know it. Oh, I know what that one is. Yeah. Oh, you, you can't lip sync this one? Oh. No, I can't. I'll, I'll play it one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen close. So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. I'm going to take a wild stab at it and say uh, my cousin Vinny. <laughs> that's a good that's, hey, no. Jack, that's Jack, I'm gonna give you an opportunity. Jack, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to be a star I here. What do you think? Uh, that's uh, the new Star Wars movie. That's uh, Star Wars: um, The Quest for More Money. What is it? Uh, Star Wars. Oh, uh, the, quest the for box more office money. awakened. The, for, the uh, Force Awakens. <laughs> yes. That was here. Yes. That was yes. Poe Dameron, and he was talking to. Uh, I've Helmeli seen Cow. Rogue One more times than I've seen Force Awakens, only because it has not been available for streaming. Well, you know what? And Rogue One is a better movie. <clears throat> so Jay. Looks like one D is yours, buddy. Here you go. <laughs> one D. One, one D, D. Right in the no left. Apropos. <laughs> you seem a decent fellow. I hate to kill you. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to die. The fuck, dude? Oh, Where my God. What? I know what? what? I'm going to cut you, Blix. Oh, my God. Up. That is the tiniest Hang up on him right now. You We're off the that? show, Jay. You're off the show. You don't know this? I'm going to file your nails. nails. Play it again one more time. Oh, my God. I can't believe I have to play it again. All right, here we go. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to kill you. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to die. Like, seriously, I don't know what it is. Go! Oh! Dude, this is, this I is... have something else to tell you. I am also not left-handed. Right, right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I know this one. Princess Bride. There you go. Well, All right. Yeah, yeah, you don't get that point. She, she, uh, yes, there was does. some collusion. Collusion. Give him the Russian goddamn. Give him the, give All him right. The it's, not like he, it's not like he's going to win. I mean, you know, somebody yeah, else. We'll say, I kind of like with uh, Cuba Death that I lost with, you know, I turned in my geek card. Uh, well, nobody yeah. wins Cuba Death. Cuba Death, is, that's the name of the game. Nobody wins. <laughs> and at the end, Pete smacks <laughs> in the face. That's Cuba Death. Let me tell you about Cuba Death. <laughs> this is the hardest, the hardest goddamn questions on earth. So, hey, so, Jack, I think okay. Jack, so I think a Jack sucks worse than I do then. Yeah. Oh, dude, no, they're yeah, like, they're they're ridiculous. No, no, hold on, wait. Like wait, 5,000 just... fucking Batman hard. Like, it's like, how... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let, let, let me redeem myself just a little bit. I, I've redone a lot about the game, and I, I played it at Metatopia with, with other designers and a bunch of playtesters and stuff, and, and they approve of the improvements I've made. If we play it again, you would like it better, trust me. I, I did things like reworded, like reversed questions and stuff, like gave the hard part of it, and you had to guess the easier part of it. I, it it's a better now. It's a better yeah. now. <laughs> he won't like it any better. We'll, we'll find out right, well, it's, it's Jack. Here's here's the important... Here's right, the let's... important... Important! Here's the important part. Mike, wave to the crowd. This week, Mike is our winner. It's about the only time he is. Yeah, he... I think it's <laughs> the first... Is this the first time you've ever won the game? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, first time he's a winner. Mike had 17, and second place was Laura Nicole, followed by Jack. Or, or 70 scores. Mike had 17, Laura Nicole had 14. Jack came in third with nine, and Jay Libby, Jay Libby, dead last. Six I points. just want to thank the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's it. Just that's just. Can I pull a, a a Tanya Harding and just be like, wow? <laughs> oh God, I wish you would. That would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Bring yeah. it. Yeah. Good luck penetrating that giant rubber skull of his. Good luck. Why you do that, Jack? Now it's in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> These Chinese knots! <laughs> Everybody, thank you all 
for joining us tonight. That is our show. Uh, again, make sure you check out Resonant Moon. Check out Laura Nicole Spencer at ResonantMoon.com. Catch her uh, on Facebook under groups forward slash cold reads. Follow her on Twitter at L Nicole Audio. And make sure you check out Mr. Libby, Mr. J. Libby at DillyGreenBeanGames.com. And buy his games. Good games. And hire Laura. She's for hire, right? You are for hire. Any audio, yeah, voice work. I, yeah. Well, no, I don't want to take voice work. I, I hate editing my own voice. But I'll edit okay. yours. Okay. And she she's done some work for me under the for the TSR stuff. She does a fantastic job. I personally endorse her work. Hey. Uh, but but that's it for our show. Let me do the uh, let me do this. Hold on, Jonathan just said Spencer and Libby would make a great detective show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Come on, Spence. I don't need Jonathan's right, Libby. shit, Libby. <laughs> That's it. You need to write that as an episode, as a short story, Spencer yeah, and Libby, an and then the two of you read it. As an episode of Cold Reads, all right. And then yes. I'll, have a, I'll have the dead body be Mike Caps. Yes. Right, yeah, excellent. Uh, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits Podcast. Catch us live on Facebook Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions and make snarky comments. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes at YouTube forward slash Mythwits. Find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you can listen to us on the go at Mythwits.podbean.com or whatever the hell your favorite podcatcher is. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. Make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread the Mythwits over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com. Uh, Mythwits is also a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. And for God's sake, don't even try to sell it. That is just an insult <laughs> to you. Because we can't either. Mm-hmm. 50 cents <laughs> next week. I'll sell right. it. For Make episode. sure. Make sure to check us through 187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. Damn it, Libby. I'm getting too old for this shit. Shut up, Spencer. <laughs>